Boss, thank you for joining us. Um, fair to say it was a, a frustrating start to the week with a, a fruitless trip to Carlisle at the M6. Yeah, I'd probably say the only positive to come out of it was I got to see Penrith in all its glory. Um, yeah, look, it, it's, it's really tough, isn't it, to have like a definitive uh, answer and opinion on should the game have gone ahead. Clearly, the pitch wasn't playable. Um, you know, we respect the fact that Carlisle got a referee in the day before the game, etc. Um it's just very frustrating that we've been out, had to do the, the journey. Um, we miss out on pretty much two days training because the training ground was covered in snow on the Monday with the current circumstances that in place. It didn't make it very easy for us to go and find somewhere to go and do a training session. The gym at the hotel was shut. All them sort of things worked against us. So the frustration of the game being off is, is, is very, very annoying. And then at the same time, the loss of two days, um, it, you know, in terms of the circumstances makes it, um, makes it a bit of a double blow, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we last spoke before the coach the game about, about injuries. Um, and I don't know if we've got another couple to add to that case. Maybe Craig Clay and Sam Ling have come off. Yeah, well, I think Craig's probably went under the radar a little bit because he he, he got brought off without sort of limping off, if you like, at, um, in that Colchester game. And um, in Craig Clay fashion, if I'm brutally honest, he is um, someone that doesn't like missing football, doesn't like not training, doesn't like missing games. Um, and we were very confident after it in terms of what he was feeling and what he was experiencing wasn't going to be... Um, the end of the world, if you like. So um, he travelled with us on Monday. Um, whether he would have been involved or not, obviously only really remains to be seen in terms of himself putting himself through extra work. He's been sent for scans um, since we've returned. And I think we'll, um, we'll certainly know a little bit more this afternoon, maybe tomorrow, whether, as to what the severity of any injury that, that he picked up at the weekend will um, will look like in terms of whether he's missing or, or whether we have him back. Uh, and sorry, just to answer the second part of that in terms of Sam, Sam's, the flip side of that looked a little bit more serious at the time. Um, he didn't travel with us on Monday with a view to, to um, not being involved. But um, second, third viewing so far since we've returned means that it doesn't quite look as severe as I think Sam thought when he came off. Um, conversation I had with him at full time was that he felt in quite um, quite a lot of pain, but it seems to have settled down and, and we're hopeful that um, that Sam's isn't going to be too severe. Mm. Obviously, since, again, since we spoke, um, council windows closed and, and we have had those four new faces in. How have they settled in amongst the group? Yeah, they've settled in well. I think... Um, the levels that we go to now, the, the amount of work, which I must thank all of the staff for, obviously the board in terms of their support for, for bringing these players in. Um, but the work ethic that's gone in from the staff uh, for a relentless period of time now and, and the um, details that we look in means that when we sign these players, we feel as though we're in a very, very good position to recruit the right type of characters and I think that's been a big thing that we've learned since some of these have come in is their intensity um, in terms of running around when they, when they you know that they bring to to training and games um, their attitudes to being prepared to, to, to their you know the dedication to their profession has been um, there for us all to see so um, so far they've settled in well albeit a very disrupted period in terms of the amount of football we're playing, but at the same time, the uh, the weather, it's been tough to, to integrate them on the training pitch. And I think the other thing that really, really has hit home for, for, to me personally is integrating people into anything at the moment is really tough because, you know, you, you look at a trip to Carlisle and you think that's oh, a great opportunity to team bond in to bring closeness to the group. But then all of a sudden, we're sitting on two buses the restriction of movement between the hotel is is very very difficult. So uh, it's been unique. It's been different, like like everything is at the moment. Uh, and we're trying to find the best angles in order to try to create that team spirit and team bonding between um, 
four new players and, uh, and and the existing group. So it's not been easy. Um, but like I say, when you when you when you bring good people into anything, I think it, it does help that process. Mm, absolutely. Um, but it was a trip to Harrogate this weekend then, and although it's just been the one game there before, certainly happy memories looking back at that result. Yeah, it's happy memories for many reasons. You know, it was on a very, very good run back then. Uh, I think it was the 10th game, I believe, that we were either unbeaten in 10 when we went there or that was the 10th one. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was a very, very good performance on the 3G. One thing that always sticks in my mind about when we went to Harrogate is that the actual crowd was integrated that day. I'm not sure how many supporters will remember, but um, albeit the Orient fans were congregated behind the dugout as such, it, there was the, uh, a lot of intermingling of, of all the fans, which was quite unique and something that not too many people experienced. But uh, on that day, it was our fans that were heard in terms of um, the noise and the celebrations at full time. Two teams at the top of the league, if I remember rightly, and uh, we come away with a very positive feel from that one. Mm. Uh, well, obviously, with the reverse fixture earlier in the season, um, a 3-0 win, which saw Danny Johnson grab the headlines. Obviously, with no Tuesday game to Carlisle, is, is that a positive sign for him that Saturday could be a start, perhaps? Yeah, you could, it's a funny one, really, because yes, he's the answer to your question. I think the second part of it, though, is that Dan could certainly have done with more minutes. So, you know, the fact that we lose that game, I've already touched upon the fact that training's been hindered, hindered because of the snow so far. Dan probably could have done with... 25, 30 minutes of match sharpness out on the pitch against Carlisle on Tuesday night, which would have pushed him even closer to uh, you know that that freshness and sharpness that that you need as you're trying to come back from an injury. But but it, it, you know we haven't had to sort of put him out there in icy conditions and risky conditions. So um, I suppose every cloud. But yeah, it, it, it leaves him a very good chance of being being close to the team again at the weekend. Hmm. And just finally, looking at um, fixture pile up, but ours obviously isn't as severe as, as Carlisle's ours at the moment. Who've got a lot of um, moving pieces to fit into their into their jigsaw puzzle. But as a manager and as a staff, are you kind of keeping one eye on, on how the season's panning out for clubs and, and how you know games are going to start stacking up? Yeah, is the answer. I think it's just so like everything, so erratic and so quickly and, and easily changed. Um, I think, was it, was I right in saying that that was their ninth game that Carlisle have postponed, whether that be due to weather or um, or COVID. So I think it can impact you on such a difficult, uh, at such times that you're not prepared for, you know, out of the blue. I think what I suppose everybody aims for now is that, that we get through the next three or four weeks in football in general, not just at Leighton Orient, but we get through the next three or four weeks and hopefully the weather starts to turn. The severity of this snow and, and cold snap that we're experiencing makes it very, very difficult at any either end of the country to get games to go ahead. So, 100%, we've always got an eye on what's going on. We, 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 we follow teams, we watch teams, we make sure we, 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 we uh, find out every detail possible throughout throughout the week when teams are playing or not playing. So, fingers on the pulse, but um, like I say, it's a, it's a click of the fingers and it, and it all changes. <laughs>